All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. We'll get started here. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction to myself. I'll get into this a little bit too later, but I'm Deputy Damon Robish. Uh, I've been with the Beetle County Sheriff's Office now for six plus years ish. So, uh, born and raised in Huron. Glad that I could come back to the community. Uh, love teaching Dare. One of those things that uh, when I first started, I didn't think that I wanted anything to do with, to be honest. Uh, but now, coming up here and stopping in Woolsey and teaching these kids every week, it's just a nice connection that we get to have in the schools. Um, the Hitchcock kids are always, it's a pleasure to come up here. They're always well behaved. I don't have to sit up there and tell them to quit talking. Uh, it's easy. They make it really easy. They're all invested. They all do what they're told. Uh, it's just a pleasure to be up here. And that's a reflection on you guys, your school, Miss Barry, everything. So I want to say thank you before I forget. But now we're going to do the, fle uh, the pledge. We'll have Kingston come up. So if you could stand and remove your hats. Good job. Thank you. So the D.A.R.E. program, it's been around for years. It's been around since 1983 to be in fact. So a lot of people uh, have probably been through this program. So D.A.R.E. It originated as don't do drugs, drugs are bad, they'll ruin your life. Okay? Well when you tell kids don't do something, what do they normally do? Do it. Do it, right? So the analogy I use week one is you guys, parents, put a cookie on the table and you say, hey, you can't touch that cookie. You can look at it, but you can't touch it. You can't have it. As soon as you leave the room, they're probably going to grab it and eat it, right? So what they, what they decided in 2009 was like the D.A.R.E. program in itself is good, but it's just, it's just not working. You know, we're, we're, we're telling these kids what drugs are, and all they're doing is going out and trying them when they're older. So it's, it, the program's just failing. But at the end of the day, their program is good because it gets officers into the school. Well, it doesn't do any good if we're telling kids what drugs are and the results are not there. So in 2009, they completely revamped the system. So now it's called keeping it real. So we still tell kids about drugs, but, we, but it's all based on the D.A.R.E. decision-making model. So it's all based on you, you define your problem, you set out your choices of all your choices, positive and negative choices, then you respond, and then you evaluate your choice. And if you go all the way through those, and you, and you get to the evaluate, and you say no, then you gotta go back to the top. So like a good example would be is, so someone offers you drugs, okay? Your choices are you can take those drugs, you can not take those drugs. At the end of the day, those are your main two choices, correct? You can either take them or you can't. So let's say you respond and you say, I'm gonna take those drugs. How's that gonna work out? Not good. You could end up in jail, you could end up ODing, you could end up getting in trouble, you could end up with anything, right? There's multiple ways. So when we get to the evaluate on that, you're like, not a good choice. So you go back and you're like, I'm gonna not take those drugs. Now you go to the evaluate and you're like, what could happen by not taking those drugs? Well, my friends are mad at me. My friends don't think I'm cool. So what do we think the best choice is there? Would you rather go to jail or would you rather have your friends a little mad at you for a while? Because they'll probably get older. So dare, dare we talk about that. Every week we harp the D.A.R.E. decision-making model. And it's not just drugs. It's waking up to go to school. Mr. Clark and I were just talking about this earlier. You can use the D.A.R.E. decision-making model for everything. It's waking up in the morning. How are you going to make the best choice in your, in your life? And that's what D.A.R.E. really is. We talked about risks, taking risks. There's good risks, there's bad risks. We want kids to take risks. Everyone needs to take a risk. If you don't take a risk, you don't know what you're going to do in life, right? But it's good to know the difference between 
co uh, positive risks and negative risks, okay? So one of the examples that I always like to use too is, I grew up in Huron. When I was offered the job as a deputy sheriff in Beetle County, I said, no way, I am not coming back to my area. I know too many people. It's gonna be too weird. I'm not doing it, right? Well, then I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe I should just take the risk and try it. Now I've been here six years. Love every second of it. Get to give back to the home community that gave so much to me. I uh, get to the connection of being around and knowing people has been great for me. You know, I feel like I can positively talk to people around this community because I was at this community. So I know what, what happens. In it. Uh, we talked about uh, consequences. Okay, so you make that wrong choice, what are your consequences going to be? Okay, also positive and negative consequences there because if you try out for a sport that you didn't think you'd like and all of a sudden you like it and now you got a whole new group of friends, you can have good consequences. Okay, if you take those drugs, your consequences could be going to jail or your parents could be very upset with you. All right, so there's both positive and, and negative on those. Uh, we talked about bullying. Okay, bullying's a huge deal. We talked all, about all forms of bullying. We talked about how you don't want to be a bully. You want to help people. You want to stand up for, for yourselves, right? We want to stand up for our friends. Uh, the, and then the main thing that we talked about is like a health network. And this is where you guys come in. All these kids in the next few years are gonna, are gonna go through so many things, right? You guys all know it, you were all there. They're gonna be offered drugs, okay? They're gonna be offered to, to try and chime in and bully someone. They're gonna be offered a whole bunch of things in this community that you guys as parents can't control, right? As Mr. Clark can't control, Miss Barry can't control it. They're gonna be offered a whole bunch of things. But their help network is the most important part and that's why you guys are here, right? So your help network, we talk about anybody that they can rely on, you know? Who can, who can we go to, a trusted adult? Who can we go to to help us get out of any situation? And I think that's really important. And that's my challenge to you guys as parents, is be there for your kids, okay? Be there for them. No matter what situation they get themselves in, if they call you, be there for them. You can be upset with them, you can be, you can, you can be mad at them, you can do all that, but at the end of the day, just be there for them and help them with that, because otherwise, they're not gonna have any, they, they, they need something. They need someone to be there for their help network. And if you're not there for them, they gotta have someone, okay? So that's my challenge to you guys as parents is just be there for your kids. Um, that's pretty much all I got on the dare, so we'll go right into the essay readings. <laughs>
More than 4,000 Americans die from tobacco-related causes each year. Kids can breathe in secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is dangerous for children and adults. Did you know there are 75,000 alcohol-related deaths each year in the U.S.? Alcohol slows down the brain and body, affects mainly with loss of coordination, poor judgment, memory loss, loss of self-control, slow reflexes, and slow reflexes. Drugs are the worst of all. Drugs, including alcohol, reduce blood flow, switch your way of thinking, can't kill brain cells, can't kill you, makes your life hard, and it's hard to quit. In the future, I will think back to what I've learned and dared, and make the right decision in tough situations. Um, I learned never to do any of these things in life. Thank you, Deputy Rogers, for teaching us there. We appreciate it.
such a good job on those reports every year I'm just so when I read them I'm just I can't even believe that they take in that much information uh, I guess it just means that they actually listen <laughs> when you're out there talking even if you don't think they are so uh, thank you guys and uh, awesome job let's give them all one more round of applause uh, so now we'll do our diplomas if Ms. Barry wants to come up and read the names I told them all that we'll pause for a picture, so don't be in a hurry.
Mr. Carson Van Buster.